This section is on linear functions. So just for some background on linear functions, you can have, there's independent variables and dependent variables. So if you have a function such as the money that you make babysitting is equal to $10 per hour, this would be a linear function. There's two variables. Hours would be the independent variable, and the money is the dependent variable. The money that you make depends on the number of hours that you work babysitting. So independent variables are the, is the um, domain or the x variable, or the input. I also put time on here because it's usually, a lot of times it's time. Dependent variable is y, it's the output, it's the range. And then just to review slope, here's the slope formula. And then slope is also the rate of change. So this section goes through the three different types of linear functions, the representations of them. So you can have linear functions be in slope-intercept form, standard, point-slope form, so when you graph slope-intercept form, you start with the y-intercept. So I'm going to do this example down here. The y-intercept of this line is negative 1. So I make a dot at negative 1. And this value, m, is the slope, the rise over run. So if the slope is negative 3, I can actually write negative 3 as negative 3 divided by 1. So you can either go down 3 right one or up three left one and you're still going to have the same line for standard form to graph it what you want to do is find the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts the a and the b and the c are not necessarily an x-intercept or a y-intercept or a slope as in over here so to find the x-intercept down here, what you're going to do is set y equal to 0. So if you set y equals to 0, you're solving negative x equals 4. So x equals negative 4. So you make a plot, you plot a point at x equals negative 4. And then you do the same for 2y equals 4. You solve for y, and y equals 2, and you make a dot. So my x-intercept is negative 4, 0, and my y-intercept is 0, 2. And at the end, you connect these dots. For point-slope form, what you do is you start at the point. So start at the point and then apply slope. So in this case, the point is negative 3, positive 1. Because of its x minus x1, and y minus 1, you're actually taking the opposite. opposite. So I'm going to make a point at negative 3, 1. And my slope is the value that's in front of the parentheses. So this is a negative 1. So I'm going to go down 1, right 1, up 1, left 1, down 1, right 1. This is my slope. So you should be able to graph a line in the, each of the three different forms. Example 1, write an equation of a line given the slope and the y-intercept. Well, this is we can use y equals mx plus p because we know the slope and the y-intercept. So my equation is going to be y equals 7x minus 5. Example 2, write an equation of a line passing through the points. So if I'm given two points, this is not... I mean, it's, it's not so straightforward to do slope-intercept form or standard form. What I would do is I would start out with point-slope form. So point-slope form, you need a point, an x1 and a y1, and you need a slope. So if I look right down here, I have a point. I'm going to use this point, but I don't have a slope. So you have to just calculate the slope by doing y minus y, y2 minus y minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So your slope is negative 3 sevenths. So you're going to use a point slope formula. It doesn't specify which form to write it in. So it's going to be y minus 3 equals my slope, which is negative 3 sevenths times x minus 2.
Also, you have horizontal and vertical lines, and they're special, too. They. So graph x equals 4. So if I go to 4 on the x-axis, no matter what y is, x is always 4, so it creates a vertical line. Now, what is the slope of the vertical line? The slope is undefined. Because if you remember, the slope is change in y over change in x. This triangle right here means change, and you might be using it in science. So if you're dividing by the change in x, the x isn't changing, so you're dividing by 0, and you can't divide by 0. What's the slope of a horizontal line? So if I have y equals negative 2, it's a horizontal line. Again, the slope is change in y over change in x. The y is not changing. So if you have a y on the top, the numerator, this is 0. So if you have a 0 in the denominator, it's undefined. Example 3, write an equation of a line parallel. So parallel lines, we use parallel, this symbol. Parallel lines have the same slopes. So I need to figure out the slope of this line. So what I do is I write it in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to solve for y. Divide both sides by negative 6. So since I only care about the slope, I'm not even going to mess with dividing these two, even though that's negative 4. I'm going to look at the negative 4x divided by negative 6. That reduces to 2 thirds. So if my original slope is 2 thirds, I'm going to use the same slope because their lines are parallel. It does not specify to write it in slope-intercept form or standard form, so I'm going to use point-slope form again because I have a point and I have a slope. So it's going to be y plus 5 equals 2 thirds times x minus 1 is my answer. In example 4, write an equation of a line perpendicular. So perpendicular was this symbol. And perpendicular slopes are opposite reciprocals. So I'll do some examples. So if you have 1 third, the opposite and reciprocal of 1 third is negative 3. If you have 5, it's negative 1 fifth. I'm making it the reciprocal, but I'm also changing it to its opposite. So negative 2 thirds turns into positive 3 halves. So if I want to write an equation of a line perpendicular to this line, this line, the slope is 6, so perpendicular 6 is negative 1 6. So again, I'm going to use point-slope form. So it's going to be y plus 3 equals negative 1 6, because that's my slope, times x minus 4.